What is up guys, HF Masters here today doing a LEGO Ninjago Masters of Spring Jitsu Hands of Time review. This time it is on the Dragon's Forge. This is item number 70627, ages are 8 to 14. This set has 1137 pieces and retails for $79.99 in the US. On the front of the box, you can just see the Dragon's Forge, the Fusing Dragon, and the Buff Million, and then you can see all of the minifigures included in the set. On the back of the box, you can see all of the functions of the set, a little tiny advertisement for the next season of Ninjago, and which time blade you're getting out of the four. Fully complete, the set comes with six minifigures, two being Vermilion, one being Kai, one being Nia, one being Kai and Nia's mother, Maya, and one being Kai and Nia's dad, Ray. A buff million, the fusion dragon, and the actual forge. The fusion dragon is a combination of a fire dragon and a water dragon. Taking a look at it, you can see just how throughout the whole thing, how it goes from, you know, like fire to water. First off, taking a look at the head, you can see how on the fire dragon's head it has the blue eyes to kind of represent the water and then on the water dragon head you can see the orange eyes to represent the fire you can also see these gold daggers that sort of represent ears the jaws are relatively adjustable you can move them about to here that's as far as you can go you get a lot of expression from that you can move them up like this to over here you can have them somewhere in the middle like this you get a lot of nice movement with the jaw this entire sort of neck construction is on the ball joint so you have a lot of mobility with that you're able to move it pretty much all over the place however you can see right here there's actually this claw like piece and this kind of limits the amount that you can move the head down so the farthest you're going to get the head sticking up whereas it's sort of like horizontal to the body or parallel to the body like this is going to be about here which is unfortunate because you know these little teeth just kind of restrict it the wings are entirely brick based which is actually pretty interesting because, you know, they have been kind of using these cloth-like pieces lately, but they went back to the brick base wings in this one, and I think it works out really well. You can see these sort of transparent feathers, if you will, and you can see, you know, you have a lot of mobility here with the ball joints. There also is a friction joint on top, so you are able to, you know, if you want to do this, you get that ability without it falling down instantly because of gravity, which is very nice. And you see some nice details there in the form of the swords and this sort of, like, dagger piece right here. The front legs have a relatively simple construction. You can see these trans orange cheese slopes which on the other side would be trans blue. On the feet you can see you have these little claws which are adjustable a little bit. You can move it up this far and then you can put it down. And these are on ratcheted joints so of course you're able to move to the side, you're able to move it forward. You get a lot of mobility with that. And you can also see on the very ends these gold dagger pieces. Moving further along the dragon, you can see this little seating section where you would put Kaya and Nia, and you can also see this adjustable shooter, which you know you can move it up and down, so you can angle it upward, and you can move it side to side like this. And what you do with this is you click the brown trigger, and then the stud will fire out, and then you can, you know, try to find that. Ideally, you would have Nia operating it, because it is a trans blue stud that represents water. However, if you wanted to, you could have Kai operate it. Moving further along the dragon, you can see just how on the top, how the sort of red and the blue just sort of intertwine and switch sides. It gives a really nice look to it. You can see even moving up to the tail, how the blue side is on the side of the fire dragon's head and the red side is on the side of the water dragon's head. But taking a quick look at the back legs, you can see that they're a lot smaller than the front legs. However, you get all the same functionality, so you know you can move these claws up like this. And they are still on ratcheted joints, so you're able to move side to side and up and down and you can stick a pose. Lastly, looking at the tail, you can see how they have these cheese slopes on the top, and you can see they're gonna be very adjustable because they are on these mixed style ball joints, so you can move them to the side, have them wrap around like this. You could have it stick up forward like this, and you can also see how there are these gold blades on the end of them. And here is what the dragon looks like with Kai and Nia on it. Taking a look at the forge close, first thing you can notice here is that there are two swords crossing, and you can see on one side you have the trans orange key slope, on one side you have the other trans blue key slope to represent fire and water. You move it to the side, on this side you can see there is sort of a tree or, you know, a vine growing out. 
on the back there isn't really anything too interesting however you know it's mostly covered up although there are some open holes which i wish they would have covered up with some technic plates however they don't bother me too much since most people aren't even going to be looking at the back anyways and lastly on this side you can just see into the forge a little bit and you can also see these lights the gateway of the forge you can see that there are these two sort of mini micro figures that also came in the lego game sets from way back when lego games was a thing However, this is a little more interesting than it looks. This entire section up here for the steps actually lifts up, and what you can do is pull out what they call the Dragon Blade. And then this can be used to activate a function which I'll show on in a little bit. The Dragon's Forge just very nicely just easily opens up like this, and then you can see there's an entire section here. So first off, let's take a look at that middle section. Taking a look at the middle section of the forge, first thing I notice right away is that when you move up, you get the continuation of these sort of like stone steps, sort of as like a tile floor here. And the first thing you see is that there are two anvils on each side, one being water themed and one being fire themed, as indicated by the trans blue and trans orange pieces on the bottom. And what you can do is taking these hammers, you can move it down like this, and you can prend to sort of be like forging a weapon. Speaking of weapons, on each side of the walls you can see weapons attached along with a bucket filled of weapons. And taking a quick look at those weapons you can see that some of these are brick built and others are not. And interesting enough there actually is a vermilion blade piece included. In the middle we get this pretty much just giant fireplace section and this actually contains a function. On the back there's a gear and when you turn it you can see that this top part sort of moves to tell the story of the dragon. You can see on this side you get sort of Nia's symbol. On this side you have a sort of painting of the fusion dragon. On this side you get Kai's symbol and then on this side you get another painting of the fusion dragon or at least a combination of it actually forming. If you take the dragon blade from earlier, you can twist it like this to activate the function. However, personally, I find it a little bit harder to use than just using the gear on the back. However, this still works. As you use the function, you can also see the fire spinning inside as you move the paintings on the top. On the left side of the forge, or the water-themed side of the forge, you can see first that there is this little wheel so you can kind of move it around a little bit. And you can use that to cool off weapons that you would be making inside the forge. You also can see a light, and there's also a window here. You can also see over here a little flag which has a symbol to represent water, or Nia. And you can also see the bench, which is actually a sticker on top, but you can take it off, and then inside you can see a playing card. On the right side, or fire themed side of the forge, you can see a table with a pot of tea on top, and you can see two chairs, which personally I wish they would be a little bit higher up, but they are still there. You can also see a little bit closer to them a rug. Moving a little bit farther down, you can see a sort of like a fridge, or a just sort of food storage, I'm not 100% sure. But you take out, and you can take out a little sort of piece of sushi and then you can just put that right back in. Also on top of there you can see two clear coffee mugs for the tea and then you can also see a flag containing a symbol for fire or kai. This set also includes the buff million mech which is a pretty cool looking thing although you can't actually put a minifigure inside it you still can get a pretty good amount of play value from it. It uses these big big fig arms you know you get a lot of actual movement from these. There's these sort of like claws here which you can spin around which I guess is supposed to represent snakes sort of like coming out since the vermilion are you know just a bunch of snakes inside armor making up humanoid figures. These shoulder pads are you know adjustable if you want to actually change the way that they are angled and there's also waist articulation on this which is pretty nice because you get some extra posability from that. You can see the back is very well covered which is pretty nice and it actually looks pretty similar to the front. This entire bottom half of the buff million mech is on ratcheted joints so you can move it up a little bit and you can move it to about like this but pretty much after that it's going to fall. So this is about as far as you can really change the sort of angle you can get a leaning forward to about there but anywhere further it's just going to instantly fall down. 
on this bottom section of the Buff Million mech, you can also see some very nice stickers there which add a nice look to it. You can see the sort of like snakes just coming up and then the little uh, clock hands. And then of course on the back you have a adjustable tail which you can just move up and down. Along with the Buff Million mech there are two Vermilion included. This one is Commander Ragmunk and this one is Slackjaw. You can see they have these two very nicely done weapons, just this sort of new vermilion blade on Commander Ragmunk over here. It's just a really, really nice piece, along with this axe piece on Slackjaw. But I'm going to go ahead and remove those so you can get a better look at just the actual figures. With the weapons removed, you can get a better look at the vermilion. You can see Commander Ragmunk has a lot more, you know, beefiness than just this entire whole armor section, along with a different helmet on top with those two sort of snakes just coming out from the side which looks pretty nice and then Slackjaw also has an extremely nice helmet with the dual molded transparent red snakes coming out from the side. And with the armor and helmets removed you can get a better look at the actual printing on Commander Ragmunk and Slackjaw's torso and here's what they look like on the back and you can see some alternate faces. Kaya and Nia actually do share a lot of similarities, as you can see the torso prints are actually very similar and they both use the exact same pretty much sort of like strap or belt design, just kind of angling on different sides. They both have the black shoulder pads with one silver sword. You can see that there is a little bit something interesting going on with their eyes. When you remove their hoods you can see that they have these interesting eyes and they do have relatively normal faces. However, when you move to the back, you see a new face print for Kai, and when you take off the armor, you can see a lot more detailing on the back. This set also comes with hair pieces for both Kai and Nia that you can use. And lastly, this set includes Rei and Maya. Maya has a staff and Rei has handcuffs. However, when you remove them, you can see a little bit more detail on their torsos. When you remove the hair pieces, you can see the full details, and on the back you can see even more details along with alternate faces. And lastly, this set includes the orange or reversal time blade. This set also comes with four red snakes. So overall, the Dragon's Forge is a very good set. Now, although I feel that most of the attention for the set is going to be going onto the Fusion Dragon, I feel that the Fusion Dragon is actually very good. While the combo dragon idea isn't necessarily new, this is by far the best they've ever done it, actually making the dragon, you know, actually kind of playable. And although the dragon itself is kind of limited in play features with only that stud shooter, I think the dragon alone really will just give you enough, you know, playability just being as the dragon. The actual forge part offers a ton of playability, there's a bunch of different weapons and there's just a lot you can do with it. And even if you have it closed, it's still a very nice looking building. And while I feel the buff million mech is good, it's definitely the worst part about this set. Mainly because it's just so limited in its articulation. You can't lean it very far forward. Pretty much all you can do is have it stand up vertically, but pretty much anywhere after that is just going to instantly fall down because of gravity, which is unfortunate. The minifigures, if you're into LEGO for that, you're going to really like most of these minifigures here, especially the Vermilion. And yeah, really the best thing you're going to get here is just the value. For almost 1,200 pieces, 80 bucks is just a steal. Even if you don't want the set, just 80 bucks for 1,200 parts is going to be very good. And if you just kind of want to sell parts on BrickLink, this is going to be good for you as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my review of the Dragon's Forge. Go, and have, go ahead and leave a comment of what you feel about the set in the comment section below. Until next time, see you guys later.